My most requested YouTube are what are the design mistakes that people are making, how to avoid them. Let's get right into it. In 2024, we are not going to be making any more mistakes. We are going to rethink our lives, reimagine our spaces, and come up with what I believe to be the perfect layouts. And we're gonna eliminate the mistakes that we've already made. And this is why I'm doing this YouTube. We are all going to make an effort to change things that are bothersome so that we could live a better life. Very first problem that I see are proportions. People are getting it wrong. And there's nothing that says amateur hour than uh, the wrong proportions. Take a look at this sofa. This sofa is so giant and it is just overpowering the room in a way that is uncomfortable and it's almost colliding with the drapes. You can't do that. You can't do that because it just doesn't look good and in order to feel good, things have to look good. Here's another example of absolute incorrect scale. You've got this enormous sofa with a coffee table that's gargantuan and there's hardly any room, breathing room. In fact, I'm getting asphyxiated as we speak. I can barely breathe. I'm not getting enough oxygen and that is how your friends are gonna feel when they come to your house and that is what you wanna avoid. Keeping things in scale is one of the number one issue that I see and the biggest mistake that I see in interior design. And if you've got things that are overpowering your room, we're gonna have to change them one by one. So let me show you, there is no reason why you can't have something that is large, but you just can't shove it near a wall or a window or in, you know, literally up to the coffee table, which is up against the credenza. So if you have a small space, that's perfectly okay. There are a lot of small spaces that are beautifully designed. You're gonna to have to pick small scale furniture. And some of the showrooms that have small scale furniture are like CB2. CB2 was really designed for apartments in New York. That's really how it started for smaller spaces and cities that are very dense. And so if you're not sure, I would then start sourcing from CB2 or places where you actually pay attention to the size, width, and height of the furniture. Read the small print. Here is an absolute do. You've got a gorgeous room with high ceilings. It's a very small room. It's not that big. And the reason this particular room works with the beautiful, you know, camel sofa and the genre type chair is that there's balance, there's proportion, and there is scalability, which you didn't see in the other photos. The next pet peeve of mine, and no pun intended, are the sizes of the televisions. You can have a large television if it's in a television room, and I understand that. I mean, I've got TVs, I like my television, but what you don't wanna do is have a television that is bigger than the credenza. Here is an example. It is actually the exact size of the credenza, and that just doesn't look good. It feels like it's dwarfing the credenza. It looks like it's crushing the credenza. You wanna keep proportion and scale. Get a bigger credenza if you need to. Here's the perfect example. Here's a television room. You've got a beautiful credenza, and the TV's in proportion to the credenza. What I also love about that photo that I wanted to point out are, notice the sconces on each side, so it almost looks like there's a painting. I've heard people say, I don't like it when the television turns into a painting. Well, what is the alternative? The alternative is one big black giant square. So I would take the art. The next big problem that I see is the rug size. And as a rug designer, I have to tell you, this one particularly hits home and I want you guys to get it right because I want you guys to have a beautiful space. And let me show you what not to do. Never, ever, ever put a rug that just frames your coffee table. That is not a rug. That is a decor mistake. And that just doesn't look good. It looks very, very, um, not to sound mean, but it looks very amateur. And I know you guys aren't amateur. You guys are beautiful, gorgeous, perfect human beings that um, love to live in style, which is why you're watching this video. So I appreciate you and love you. And by the way, please subscribe because it's 2024 and we are going to really dial it in this year. We're gonna have so much great content. There's gonna be a lot of synergy between Instagram and uh, YouTube and TikTok. So I'm really excited to share all the new things that are happening. If you guys haven't noticed, there's been a very large digital upgrade on my channel. You guys might have um, visually noticed. And for someone who's visual such as myself, this is very exciting to share. So if you haven't seen what's happening, definitely subscribe to my Instagram. We are actually gonna do something new. We're gonna put the QR code above for my Instagram so you can easily 
figure out exactly how to be able to follow me on Instagram. And guess what? If we're gonna do it for Instagram, we're gonna do it for TikTok. So on the screen, you're gonna see the QR codes, make sure and follow so that you don't miss out on a lot of different and interesting content that's going to be going back and forth between the different social channels. I also wanted to point out the fact that even though you think your rug is big enough because it goes under the legs of the furniture as it is in this sofa, it's actually not good enough because it only goes under one leg and the room is giant and the, literally the sofa should be sitting on the rug. Not the entire sofa needs to be on the rug, but at least 50% of the sofa is a good rule of thumb. So if you can adhere by it, 50% of the furniture, if not all of the furniture, should be sitting on the biggest piece of furniture in that room. Perfect example of what you should do. You've got a gorgeous cream rug in this room. You've got the beautiful uh, Vladimir Kagan that is sitting on it. You've got your coffee table. You guys get it. Here's one of my ruggables. And of course, as you can see, um, it's not a coincidence that I love this rug, but yes, as you can see, it's in proportion, it's in scale, and it's the right size. Here's another example. Again, the rug is the perfect size. Just remember that if it feels small, it probably is. And if you're wondering whether you should go between an eight by 10 or a nine by 12, just go for the bigger. You will definitely be to your advantage to go slightly bigger than smaller. You guys know I'm the queen of mixing different periods and styles. That is what makes things ultra, ultra designer. However, I'm seeing mistakes being made in this exact category, and I'm here to set you straight. You may mix periods, but I would choose for those of us that are DIYers, two periods only for now because I'm seeing like seven periods being mixed in together. You've got a little bit of, look at this photo. You've got a little bit of contemporary with a little bit of mid-century, with a little bit of country, a little bit of farmhouse, a little bit of industrial. We can't do that. It's not a garage sale. What it needs to be is methodically thought out. And so in order to make it easier for you guys, if you are lost and you wanna mix your pieces, pick two periods, pick a mid-century and perhaps French traditional, pick mid-century and perhaps industrial, or industrial and Parisian chic, something something that speaks to you and that are pretty much um, at polar opposites is the key to making it work. So if you have Rococo and ultra modern, that would be the opposites. Those really work together. So again, don't pick styles that are too similar and try and make them butt heads, but pick two styles that speak to you that are relatively different. Let's give you more examples. Here's another terrible example. Again, you're mixing too many colors, too many, you've got a little bit of French Louis 16, you've got a little bit of, um, I don't know, uh, Mitchell Gold Bob meets Wayfair meets mid-century meets contemporary. So no, you can't do that. But let me show you what actually works. You've got basically a Moroccan background, you know, sort of earthy, rustic, and then you've got mid-century um, cane chairs. That works because you've got two periods, they mix well together and they look good. Let me show you what actually does work. Take a look at this photo. You've got two Barcelona chaises. Barcelona chaises are always going to be in style. If you're at a loss, buy two Barcelona chaises, um, chairs, sofa, anything uh, from Mies van der Rohe is going to work. And then they have placed two antique French pieces. Why does this work? Well, you've got two extreme periods coming together and coming together beautifully. Here's another example of how it can work and work beautifully. You've got a caned French day bed here with two 50s Warren Plattner mid-century chairs. It works because you have two extremes and it works beautifully. Don't forget that color is an important consideration when it comes to furniture. Um, mixing and you don't want to mix things that are of extreme colors like we saw in that original slide. You want to bring things that are homogenous that work well together and this photo of this beautiful curved sofa and the touches of color work because they're all in the same family. If you don't know how to pick colors from the same family, it's very easy, just Google it. Paint colors from the same family and you will get an array of, of examples and then you can just stick to that color palette. Design mistake number four and the worst of its kind, the biggest offense of all. I'm only gonna touch upon this for one second, but it had to be spoken about because it's so bad that it hurts the soul, the matching, matchy everything. This was in at some point, I don't know why, I don't know how that happened. I don't think I was alive when this was happening. And otherwise I would have had a YouTube channel to stop it. So never ever buy matching anything. If you wanna have history, if you wanna have interest, if you wanna have a good, beautiful home, never 
buy anything that matches, with the exception of a pair of matching chaises, like you see in this photo. That's the only thing that can match, two chairs in a room. Here's an example of non-matchy and how it works. Why does it work? Well, there is a beautiful dance between these two pieces. It takes a very seasoned eye and a very trained interior designer to be able to pick pieces that are all different, that work together in one room. I don't expect you guys to be able to do that right away. It takes a lot of seasoning and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of study. It needs to be your profession. But in this case, this is why it works, because they play together. These pieces are really gorgeous together. One thing I did wanna say about Matchy is that remember your architectural design, your built-ins, all of those need to be symmetrical and matchy, but not the furniture that lays within that room. So as you can see, you've got a library here. We've got two gorgeous bookcases. We don't want two different bookcases. We want the same bookcase. So anything that's built in, anything that uh, takes a nail to remove, must be symmetrical. Offense number five. This is also very painful to my heart. It really saddens me when I see this. And I believe that it also is worthy of a discussion in case you guys are accidentally doing it, not on purpose, but short curtains. Do not ever put a curtain that doesn't touch the floor. It must at least kiss the floor at a minimum. It cannot even have a millimeter of space between the curtain and the floor. You want it to kiss, and if it's not kissing, it can certainly puddle a little bit. I don't mind puddled curtains. I think that they are warranted in certain cases, in certain homes, but certainly when you have a curtain that ends in the middle of the drywall with no purpose, even if it ended at the end of the window, it's, it's a no. Here's an example of what works. You've got these gorgeous curtains, they kiss the floor, they have a beautiful rod. Now, rods are coming back. They were strong in 2023, they're gonna be back in 2024. A lot of people want their rods to disappear at one point and we're doing the ripple folds out of the ceilings, but now we are bringing rods back because they bring visual interest into the room and because it's a little bit of hardware that people like. They like the linen curtains with the metal hardware and I like it, I think it looks nice and it must be done in a room that requires it. So be careful with that. Here's another example of a perfect curtain. It goes from the molding to the floor. If you've got crown moldings, start them as close to the crown molding as possible. Have the hardware disappear and have your curtains kiss the floor. Another fantastic example when it comes to curtains that I wanted to point out, do not go right above your window. Go even further up. It makes your ceilings feel 10 times taller, 10 times more beautiful, and it really makes the space feel more expansive and designer. I hope you enjoyed my what not to do in design, or shall we say the worst design mistakes of 2024. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I wanna know what you guys wanna see next. I really do. So chime in. I've gotten a lot of great examples from you guys that I have actually turned into YouTube. So your voice matters. I listen to you. I love you guys. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I can't wait to see you again next week on this channel.